Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to Maurice's Book Review Show. I'm your host, Glenn, aka Maurice, on the ones and twos. <laughs> nah, but that is my middle name, Maurice, for those who don't know. Before I get into the book, I just want to thank everybody that's listening, whether it's visual or you're listening to the audio version. Thank you. I'm grateful. I hope these books have been good to you as much as they've been good to me, because this is what I do it for. You know what they say, what two shins say, what I do it for. <laughs> nah, but yeah, thank you guys. Um, but yeah, today is book number 14. Before we get there, I just want to say, man, book number 13 was super special to me, meant a lot to me. And this week, this week, we just freeing souls, you know, it's just a book about freedom. And this week, we got The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This book, man, this book. So uh, the reason why I chose this book, the reason why I read this book and want to give it to you guys, because, you know, just on my path in life, um, I have been recommended and told to read this book by a few people, you know, and they told me that it did a lot for them. And after reading this book, I see why, you know, I see why again. So the basis purpose of this book is a practical guide to personal freedom. Um, and so he made the book is created to assist you in the art of transformation to break free from fear based self limiting agreements or beliefs in your life, gain more personal power, become stronger and end the emotional pain of pains, uh, which can and will open a door to enjoy more life and begin a new dream, the dream of life that you want and desire. So yeah, that is the basis purpose of the book. And again, man, I understood a lot more after I read this book. And we're going to get into my favorite quotes and highlights of why people really enjoyed this book and why it just means so much. But again, before we go into that, I always got to highlight the author, Don Miguel Ruiz. Uh, Don Miguel is a renowned spiritual teacher and best-selling author. He actually teamed up with his son and they uh, made a sequel to this book uh, and it's called the fifth agreement yeah yeah very clever <laughs> now nah, yeah, they made the fifth agreement um i haven't do dove into that one but it is out there with his son don miguel was also listed in 2018 on the walkins 100 most spiritually influencing living people in the world in the world craig <laughs> in the world Man, so that's something to be said about someone when they're listed as top 100, not 100. You heard? <laughs> but yeah, uh, that is Don Miguel, um, the author, the only, you know, wrote this book by itself. Um, so yeah, so before we get, so now let's get into the book. Now again, the book is called The Four Agreements, and The Four Agreements the, uh, what the book is based on the four agreements. First agreement is be impeccable with your word. Second agreement is don't take anything personal. Third agreement is don't make any assumptions. And the fourth and last agreement is always do your best. Always. Yeah, so that's the four agreements, the main subjects of the book. But it's a lot of good stuff in the book. Uh, the book starts with uh, intro and another section. So let's get into that. My favorite quotes and highlights from the book from each section. So again, to start off the book, uh, it goes into a section called domestication in the dream of the planet. And it goes on to say in this, before we are born, and again, I'm going to kind of these what what he says is kind of all throughout but i just kind of summarize what i really took away from it uh he says before we were born the humans before us created a big outside dream the dream of the planet where rules societal laws religions cultures government etc etc were created we were born with the capacity to dream but the humans before us teach us how to dream the way the society dreams and they do so by hooking our attention 
and putting their or society's dream in our head through repetition. And this repetition starts with language. So yeah, and then he goes on and says he, he calls this process the domestication of humans, which starts when we are children and this process is similar to the way we domesticate animals via a punish and reward system. Jeez. And then well, I'm a quote in there and that section is domestication is so, the domestication is so strong that at a certain point in our lives, we no longer need anyone to domesticate us. We become our own domesticator. Man, and you know that book, I don't want to get killed, but that, that quote right there reminded me of a quote by someone. Bear with me, I forgot the name right now. Uh, but that said um, that many more slaves could have been freed if only they knew they were slaves. Yeah, that's what that quote reminded me of. Because it's just basically that like, you know, for people to get out of something, they have to be aware and know that they like, you know, they are something, you know, and that's what that really spoke to me. Last quote of this section is death is not the biggest fear we have. Our biggest fear is taking the risk of being alive, being ourselves and expressing who we really are. That is section, the first section, like the intro section, domestication and a dream of the planet. I told you, it starts the book off with a bang. Yeah. All right, so now let's get into the agreements. And the first agreement, or first section, is uh, be impeccable with your word. And my, here's my quotes. The first quote is, the word is a force. It is the power you have to express and communicate, to think, and thereby to create the events in your life, the most powerful tool you have. Um, it goes, another quote is, when you are impeccable, you take responsibility for your actions but you do not judge or blame yourself. Uh, another quote in there that I really like is self-rejection is the biggest sin that you can commit or that you do commit. Yeah, and man, don't we all do that? But yeah, and then uh, my last quote in that section is the only thing that can break a spell or agreement is to make a new agreement based on truth. The truth is the most important part of being impeccable with your words. And he talks about how um, many words said to us via ourselves, via other people, um, via like marketing, whatever the case may be, it's all opinion based, you know, 99% of the time. And he talks about when we speak, when we use our, when we use words, the truth behind the word or behind what we say is the most important part about being impeccable with your word. I really like that. So yeah, that was section one or agreement one, be impeccable with your word. Now agreement two, which is don't take anything personally. Now, this one's going, this one was a hard, you know, a hard pill to swallow, as they say, um, because you know, a lot of things happen to us, you know, and sometimes it'd be personal, you know, but <laughs> I'm gonna go into my favorite quotes from it. Uh, first quote is, whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Second quote is, personal importance or taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me, 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 me. And, it, and before that it says, you take it personally because you agree with whatever is said. And like when I read that, I was like, wait, sometimes when we triggered, you know, we may not agree with it, but then I thought about it. Like, you know, when people call you like fat or ugly or things of that nature, it's like, if you didn't agree with it, if you knew like the truth of behind what they're saying, didn't, you know, uh, like didn't uh, uh, oblige to you, then you wouldn't even have a reaction. So then when he said that, like you take it personally because you agree with whatever it's said, I was like, damn, church. Then my next quote is, what they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements that they have in their own minds. So when you learn to not take it risk, you know, personally, you figure out that it's everything that people say and do is just like a reflection of where they are and who they are. And then it says, another one, it says, do not expect people to tell you the truth because they also lie to themselves. You have to trust yourself and choose to believe or not to believe what someone says to you. And before that, it talks about how we, you know, 
through domestication, we lie to ourselves, you know, often, you know. Uh, so, yeah. And then the last quote of that uh, section is, if others say one thing but do another, you're lying to yourself if you don't listen to their actions. Let me, let me say that again for those that you have to listen to their actions. Yeah. You got to do it. Listen to their actions. And you lie to yourself if you don't, if you take it personally and don't believe their actions over their words. I like that. Agreement number three, which is don't make assumptions, any assumptions. Um, first quote from that is the problem with making assumptions is that we believe they are the truth, but it's an assumption. But you believe it's the truth. Make it make sense, you know. <laughs> it says the whole war of control between humans is about making assumptions and taking things personally. Our whole dream of hell is based on that. Sheesh. I'm gonna let I'm gonna just let that one sit. Like a little weighing bar. You just gotta let this sit. Uh, the next one is it is always better to ask questions than to make assumptions because assumptions set us up for suffering and you think about that like in a relationship or if you're playing uh, sport or whatever the case may be you know if you don't know or if you make an assumption you can get burned for it or you set yourself up for failure yeah it says we also make assumptions about ourselves and this creates a lot of inner conflict. You overestimate or, undermate, uh, or underestimate yourself because you haven't taken the time to ask yourself questions and to answer them. Yeah, man. Yeah. We try to do something. We too, like, you know, we tell ourselves we can do something, you know, that whatever the case may be and it's like we either overestimate or underestimate because we haven't taken the time to really sit like this is you know yeah anyways that's my last quote from section number three or agreement number three which is don't make any assumptions next one is agreement four which is always do your best which is my favorite one it's application of life a principle of life a true ism of life always do your best now my first quote from there is under any circumstance always do your best no more and no less yep everything is alive and changing all the time so your best will sometimes be high quality and other times it will not be as good and i like this quote because it reminded me of being like an athlete or being in sports or watching sports and like you may tell yourself or you may see one say like see someone say like you know like i gave my best but you know like i wasn't enough so next time they may not give their all you can tell like their energy is off you know but it's like you have to remember everything is alive everyone may be trying their best and things are changing all the time so you may have uh, a great game one game when you gave your best uh, but then the next game, you got someone who else is trying their best or, you know, a circumstance may say change and your shoes or something. You like, you know, you're giving your best, but, you know, the rim may be, you know, something wrong or who knows. But it's just like circumstances are changing and, you know, your best may just not be enough. But it's like no matter what, give your best. No matter what. Uh, yeah. And the next quote is when you overdo. You deplete your body and go against yourself and it will take you longer to accomplish your goal. So say you have something you want to do. I like this quote because like say you have something you want to do and you like overdo it. You're like trying to stick to it um, and you're depleting your body. Like now you're forcing yourself to your body to go in shock. You're forcing your body to be, you know, overly stressed. And it actually he talks about, a, he comes up with a little story in there about uh, some guy trying to transcend life and he was like he had a he had a uh, master and was like yo if I meditate for two hours a day how long would it get there how long would it take me to transcend like life and then he was like what if I tra what if I meditate for eight hours how long and the dude was, and, you know and the master was basically like that it's just about giving your best with you know the time you have but yeah um, and like doing your best with like love and harmony. Yeah, anyway, so we go to the next quote, 
that doing your best is taking action because you love it, not an expectation of a reward. Yes. And I really like that quote because you hear all people also that say like they're doing their best because they have to or because they're expecting something, you know, and then they don't get it. And then now it's like all these things that they come up with in their head when really you should only be taking action because you love it, not in expectation of reward because you have to, because you don't have to do anything. Boom. So, yeah, I like that quote. And then my last quote from this uh, section, this agreement, is when you do your best, you learn to accept yourself. But you have to be aware and learn from your mistakes. Learning from mistakes means you practice. Look honestly at the results and you just keep on practicing. Yep. Learn. Try. Fail. Learn again. Boom. All right. That is section number four, agreement number four. Always do your best. Now we're coming to the last sections. Um, this section I really liked is breaking old agreements. So, you know, you get through and you're like, all right, how do I get a, like, rid of them old agreements, some old things I had in my head that uh, people have been telling me. Um, and it goes on to talk about, it says, true freedom has to do with the human spirit. It is the freedom to be who we really are. Because he brings up how, like, in America people talk about freedom. But it's like true freedom has to do with the human spirit. Um, and then the next quote that I literally like is first step toward personal freedom is awareness. We need to be aware that we are not free in order to be free. We need to be aware of what the problem is in order to solve the problem. So again, bringing it all the way back, how it said like, if you're a slave, they could have like that, that quote that could have freed more slaves if they knew they were slaves. You have to be aware that you are a slave to, you know, free yourselves from being a slave. So, yeah, man, awareness. And then the next one, next quote I like is, we can reach heaven while we are alive. We don't have to wait until we die. God is always present and the kingdom of heaven is everywhere. But first, we need to have the eyes and ears to see and hear the truth. That truth. Yeah, I like that one. And then it goes on to say, uh, another quote is, we cannot change an agreement with less power than we used to make the agreement. And almost all of our personal power is invested in keeping the agreements we have with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a story in the first one about the word. And this quote kind of had reignited that and kind of stuck with me because of that. Because it talked about how this little girl's mom had told her her voice was ugly and she can't sing so for like 17 years she never sang and like made sure she never like she forced herself to never sing and like when she was finally like you know the point where she was finally trying to come out of it she had the it's like this quote like hit because it's like for 17 years if you you know suppressing yourself and you know um what's the word um like neglecting yourself from like your gift it took you 17 years so like that all that energy that you gave to not do something is going to take some time you know um you have to give the same amount of power of uh overcoming the change in agreement to make a new one so i like that but it says the first is the first and best way is forgiveness is the only way to heal it says you must forgive everyone God, parents, siblings, etc. Once you do that and forgive yourself, the self-rejection in your mind is over and you can begin to start the process of gaining freedom in the spirit. Yeah. And then my last quote from the book is actually was in a section or it was in agreement. I want to say agreement four, but uh, when you read the book, you can correct me. Um, or if you have read the book, you can correct me. But this quote was like my final quote that I wanted to give. Is your own body is a manifestation of God. And if you honor your body, everything will change for you. Yeah. Honor yourself. Honor God. And everything in your life will work itself out. Yeah, so that is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Again, great book.
it's not a it's, it's really not a long or hard read at all again it's just isms it's just really isms it's like 120 pages um just really good stuff um just giving you just like some you know some just spiritual advice some advice on just how to like gain your freedom back your personal freedom and express yourself love yourself and you know you know be a person of love and without fear because that's ultimately what it's about spread love yeah so that is the four agreements man uh there's an audiobook version of it i'll put that in the description box i got mine from Barnes and Nobles, y'all know Barnes and Nobles is my spot. That's where I get it from. But yeah, you can get it Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, wherever they carry books. I can almost guarantee you they got the four agreements. But yeah, until next time, y'all.